Humanity, fascinated by its ability to render and preserve images of life, at first fashioned spectacular visuals on cold cave walls. As emerging civilization coalesced in misty green jungles and hard sprawling deserts, they told their tales of gods, conquest, and daily ritual on massive stone pyramids and sacred temples. Exquisite frozen views of human life in ancient and later societies appeared almost alive in valued articles of wood, gold, silver, bronze, copper, clay, and bone. Humanity's images next emerged colorfully from the medium of paper and later became electronically honed into patterned blobs of pure energy and wavelengths which fly through the intricate workings of solid state circuitry and are displayed on the familiar television set or cathode ray tube. We have transformed our image making tools from stone and charcoal to light and energy. We have emerged from the darkness of prehistoric caves to harness light and energy on a technological level. By moving energy through air, wires, and circuits, we can communicate abstract thoughts across the planet and strongly influence our whole society. The standard of the broadcast industry is the Conrack monitor, which sells for about $5,000 for a 19-inch diagonally measured color monitor. Conrack monitors are the product of a corporate organization with a single goal, to design and produce the highest quality monitors available to the broadcast and teleproduction professional. To maintain high standards, Conrack manufactures all of its own critical subassemblies and major components. Here you see the Conrack manufacturing facilities at Covina, California, occupying 125,000 square feet of production space with 600 employees engaged in monitor assembly and testing activities. The design of a Conrack monitor begins here in the engineering department. Drawings of complete systems as well as sub-assemblies such as printed circuits, wiring harnesses, and power supplies are completed in this area. Next, prototype systems are built and tested before assembly procedures and tooling are finalized. One of the several sub-assemblies for the final assembly line is the high voltage power supply. Here you see units ready for installation in black and white monitors. This same system is used in monitors ranging in size from 9 inch to 23 inch. Jumpers are changed on the transformer to accommodate the proper CRT size. In this view you can see a small yellow sticker placed on each power supply next to the proper size identification. Another sub-assembly is the wiring harness which interconnects PC boards, components, and panel controls and you'll notice above the workstation the pre-cut wires prepared ahead of time cut to the proper length, pre-tinned, and ready for use. This is the harness prep area where wires prepared for sub-assembly. Many of the critical coils and degaussing coils are manufactured in-house using these coil winding facilities. This coil winding jig keeps track of the number of turns of wire in the coil as well as measuring finished coil resistance. In-house capabilities at Conrack range from sheet mantle fabrication, such as you see here, to the application of monochrome CRT phosphorus. In the background, you can see the receiving dock where incoming materials and components arrive. One of the most fascinating areas, to my way of thinking, is the printed circuit board assembly, the first step of which is the pre-sorting of components such as resistors, diodes, capacitors, and other such components in readiness for the inserter. This operator is called a manual sequencer. She selects the components from the trays in front of her and places them on a sequencing spool in the proper order. Next, the spool is transferred to the inserting machine and made ready for operation. This operator uses a pistol grip control to move a fixture holding a PC board into position for component inserting. These boards are purchased out of house, already pre-drilled and etched, and then they're stuffed with components in-house. Here you see the template, which is the operator's roadmap. These lines are followed by the pistol grip. Pulling the trigger drops a stylus into the hole in the template. If this is done in the proper sequence, and assuming the components are in the right sequence, every board will emerge the same. 
PC board inspection takes place at this time to ensure proper component placement before soldering. Because some components cannot be inserted using the auto insert machine, these components must be inserted manually. Although some soldering must be done by hand, most PC board soldering is done by a wave soldering machine called the Equiflow 500. Loaded boards move down a conveyor belt, which is variable from 0 to 20 feet per minute. First boards enter the flux wash, which prepares the lower side of the board for soldering. Then the board is carried by a fixture over a fountain of molten solder. The controls and gauges indicate that the Equiflow system is set for 5 feet per minute at a temperature of 510 degrees Fahrenheit. As boards emerge from the rinsing station of the Equiflow soldering machine, several are checked to assure proper machine operation. Because some components, such as switches and coils, might be damaged by wave soldering, they must be soldered to the PC board by hand. All boards must be trimmed before being delivered to inspection. Here you see component leads are being clipped off and also at this station necessary repairs are made. This workstation is equipped for touch-up, rework, and PC board repair. Wicking braid and pulse vacuum techniques are used for solder removal. All boards must be tested using an electronic test jig. Here boards are being connected one at a time to complete this monitor circuit. This go-no-go -go test is for incoming boards manufactured in Mexico. Another method of testing PC boards is a quick disconnect system whereby boards are connected to a known working monitor and adjusted to approximate normal operation. This is one of the three final assembly areas where sub-assemblies are brought together to form a completed monitor. As the metal chassis is moved along from station to station, each assembly person adds some component or sub-assembly. Here you see a young man installing the wiring harness. This black and white monitor assembly line, referred to as the monochrome line, uses a movable fixture to hold the chassis at it as it is moved from station to station. Here several components are being soldered in their proper location. This is the color assembly area. Notice how the fixture can be rotated for access to both sides of the chassis. Here the chassis moves to the wiring inspector. After the cathode ray tube is installed, the completed monitors are moved to the testing area. Here you see a technician setting up to test a monochrome monitor. A very necessary standard of measure for television is the United States Color TV Standard, traceable to the National Bureau of Standards in Washington, D.C. This signal, as well as all needed test patterns, are generated at Conrac and fed to all electronic testing areas. This elaborate system of generators, pulse cross displays, distribution amplifiers, and waveform monitors is rack mounted in a 19 inch panel and broadcasts both monochrome and color signals to various parts of the plant. Here's an example of the crosshatch pattern being displayed on a monitor for testing. This monitor is now ready for final inspection. Color monitors are also sent to a test area where they are energized for the first time and made to work. If the monitor does not work properly, it is the responsibility of this technician to do any necessary repairs. Here you see a typical monitor adjusted to conform to the inspection specifications using a test pattern. This color monitor is now ready for final inspection. These monitors must cook for 72 hours in this environmentally controlled area before the final inspector will buy them off. If a monitor here has a vertical, horizontal, flagging problem, or any other glitch, it must be returned to color repair. Some monitors make many returns to this area before the final inspector is satisfied with its performance. These monitors are ready to ship. Each unit is properly numbered so as to be reunited with all the necessary paperwork. The inspector will gladly inform the expediter ship them. From the design concepts to operating systems, Conrack, like its video monitors and CRT displays, has qualities that more than meet the eye.